Our minds or their minds were on the same thing. And that, that's a miracle. And I mean, I don't know how many is here today, you know, uh, 80 to, to 100, I don't know. <clears throat> but for us to have our minds on the same thing while concentrating on Him. Um, and I thank you for being here today. But th today is a, is a time of celebration. And I asked Robin to bring a. <clears throat> I, I had looked uh, for, I've got something that's called um, jail fuel, and I couldn't find it and, and burn it. But just in a symbolic today, I wanted just to uh, light a match or uh, a fire, and I'll let this burn as we, uh, as we begin our, our message today. So today, <clears throat> is this on? Too much technology for me. All right. So today is Pentecost Sunday. Um, some, will, some will say well, hallelujah, right? Because we know exactly what it means. And then there may be some here today that may say, okay, Pentecost. Mm, all right. Next. I, I, we might not connect with it. Now, certainly, if you're paying attention, it's on the sign, Right? We worship on a, an umbrella that says Pentecost or International Pentecostal Homeless Church. And we gather with other people around the globe, millions of other people, under that banner of International Pentecostal Homeless Church. Now that doesn't mean that we have some monopoly or the market cornered on what is called Pentecost. But what it means is that we, we embrace and we celebrate and we enjoy and we experience the fullness of what we're going to talk about today and um which is pentecost sunday this is the as many call it the birthday of the church the birthing of the, the of the church age but we so we'll ask so what is pentecost what is pentecost and as i begin i would i would say that i believe that we should embrace that we should experience all that all that this means now the word pentecost it means 50th now that begins to tie us with our jewish brothers and sisters yes your jewish brothers and sisters see we according to romans uh, 9 through 11 we've been grafted in into the olive tree and and, and praise the lord for that right hallelujah so what I'd like to, to share today on is, is on three things, three aspects of what I believe Pentecost is about. It's the filling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit and with fire, the fulfilling of prophecy, and the feast of harvest. And I would like to do that in reverse order. I want to start talking about the feast of harvest first and then I'm going to start in the Old Testament. And how today ties in with, um, with the, the Israel's uh, worship. Feast of Harvest has, uh, has many names, many different names. And this uh, ties in with uh, seven different um, feasts that they, the children of Israel participate in. It's called the Feast of Harvest. It's called the Feast, Feast of Weeks. It's also called the Feast of Pentecost. And that's the term, that's the kind of a Gentile term that we use is the uh, Feast of Pentecost. Well, what I would, um, I guess, like to try to explain is the, the Feast of Weeks. That's where the word Pentecost comes from. I just mentioned it means 50th. So where it ties in is, it is seven weeks plus one day, 50 days past Passover. And that is an, uh, that's another feast. So there's, I got one note here. So what I like to do is um, rehearse real quickly the, uh, the seven feasts that, um, 
that uh, the seven feasts of Israel. First, there's the Passover. And what that uh, represented to them was when the plagues of Pharaoh, the last plague, was when the death angel, the firstborn, was going to be, be killed. And the, the plan was for the Israelites to kill a, a lamb, unblemished lamb, and they were to paint their doorway and their lintel with blood. And then the death angel would pass over. Well, fast forward, all of, all of these feasts points to uh, something else. And the, the first three pointed to Jesus Christ. The, fir the first one, the Passover, Jesus is our Passover lamb, right? I mean, uh, it, it pointed to his crucifixion. Because it says, uh, Scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no passing over or, or there is no forgiveness of sin. So, so that's, that's the first feast. And the next feast, I mean, all, all these first three, there's three uh, spring and there's, uh, there's three in the fall. So the, the next one is unleavened bread. And unleavened bread, what that represented was when they, the Israelites was exiting out, of, uh, ex exiting out of Egypt so quickly they didn't have time for the, the bread to rise. But for, for, for us, what it represents, it point, still points to Jesus Christ because this uh, is when he was laid in a tomb. And, and to us personally, it means that that is the uh, leaven in the Bible represents sin. And for us, that is the, our need for sanctification and for the, the sin root to be, to be pulled out of us. The next one was first fruits. And that was uh, right at the beginning of uh, when the, the barley and the wheat was, the, it hadn't headed out yet, but uh, they saw the, the crop coming along and they would go and they would cut some hands full of it and they'd bring it to the priest and the, the priest would offer it up as a, a wave offering before the Lord, thanking him for what was to come. And all that points to still is Jesus Christ. Because he is the first fruits. It speaks about, Corinthians speaks about that he was the first one who, who, raised, who rose again. And because of that, and we receive in him, we have resurrection power in us. But he was the first. And that's why it's called the first fruits. Now the next one is called Pentecost. And I'm going to skip over that one and I'll go to the, the, one, the three in the fall. The fall feast of Israel. The first one was the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Where we're at, all of this is on God's calendar. All seven of these are on God's calendar. I've already named the first three. They have come to pass in Jesus Christ. Where we're at today, and that's where we're going to, is the one right in the middle. The one in the middle is... Pentecost, And that's what we celebrate, and I'll, I'll finally get there as I finish my opening here in a moment. The next thing that will come to pass on God's calendar is the Feast of Trumpets. That is the rapture of the church, the rapture of the bride who has prepared herself. And that very well is us. Now, we... Um, have had a death in the family and it is a, says that it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment but I believe you and I very well very well could be um, exited out of here with this uh, event when it comes to pass now the, the next one excuse me a minute the next one is the day of atonement and um, the last one is the um, the Feast of, of Tabernacles. And the Day of Atonement is the second coming of Jesus Christ. And the, the Tabernacle is the beginning or the initiation, the inaugural of the, the millennial reign. Hallelujah. So, so quickly, I would like to go and just read just a little bit. Um, and this will tie into where I think we're, we're heading to. The Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, um, 
they're, they're all synonymous terms, the, the Feast of Harvest. We can find the readings in Exodus, we can find it in Leviticus, we can find it in Deuteronomy, we can find it you know, in, dependent to, in, in several places. But I just want to read two or three verses here and uh, we can, can look at what they celebrated. And what they were celebrating was when the, this was when the crop was a little bit further along. This was in the third month. And the, the, uh, I just spoke about how they would do a wave offering of the sheaves. That was before it was heading out. Well, the uh, Feast of Harvest is when the, the heads are out and the first is starting to ripen. The whole crop's not ripe. But, the, and they will take the, um, the grains that are ripe and they will make something with that. So let, let's read it. It says, um, kind of starting in the, in the verse, and it says, And the feast of harvest and the first fruits of your labor, which you have sown in the field, and it moves on, and, and the feast of ingathering, and at the end of the year, when you have gathered into the fruit of your labors and from the field. Leviticus. Count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. That's tying in with the 50th. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord, and you shall bring from your dwelling two wave loaves of two-tenths of an ephah. And they shall be made of fine flour, and they shall be baked with leaven. And they, they are the first fruits to the Lord. And you shall offer them with the bread seven lambs and ram, lambs of the first year, and without blemish one young bull and two rams. And they shall be as a burnt offering, that means there's fire there, with their grain offering and their drink offerings, and are offered, made by fire to, as a sweet aroma to the Lord. So what they would do, each family of their crop, uh, and they were, they were just thanking the Lord for the beginning of harvest and, and thanking Him for the material blessings of what they did. And each family would take that in and would grind the, the, um, the wheat up. And what they would do, they would present to the, to the um, priest two loaves made out of the first part of the crop. And the, the priest would come and they would offer up to the Lord and then thank Him for the material blessings and, and the provision of harvest and, and what was ahead. And as the, the, you see, the sickle was just beginning. It was just beginning. This was on the front edge of the harvest. But they would, this was a time of celebration and a time of thanksgiving. And there were other um, fruits and, and cheeses and, and things and uh, much celebration, much festivities and, and dancing and singing. But they were thanking God. Thanking God for uh, the harvest and, uh, and the provision. And praise God, we've got a lot to be thankful for on the provision side too, right? Amen. Amen. Sure, we've got a lot of issues in our country. A lot of things that we would change if we could probably. But we live in the greatest country in the world. And, we, and such material blessings. And so we, uh, we do pause and thank God for that. But today... We celebrate, uh, it's a spiritual blessing, and, uh, and maybe not so much a, a material as we uh, celebrate uh, today. I've laid down my uh, clicker. <laughs> Excuse me. So I believe that's, this is one of the, the, the first aspects of Pentecost that uh, I, I believe it, it, uh, it points to was, was the, uh, the Feast of Harvest. And secondly, I believe this is tied so closely to uh, the fulfilling of prophecy. And I'm just going to read, I'm, uh, could have picked other ones just for the sake of time. I just wanted to, to read one uh, scripture out of Joel. And it says, And after I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, even upon the men's servant and upon the maid servants. In those days I will pour out of my spirit. So today as we celebrate, let us not forget that the, the coming of the Holy Spirit and with fire, that it, it is the fulfilling of prophecy. Now thirdly, this is a, we have a recorded in Acts chapter 2, this is the fulfilling, or excuse me, not fulfilling, the filling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's what we celebrate today. That's what Pentecost really is. 
Now, I asked somebody the other day, I said, what is Pentecost? And they said, oh yeah, that's when the followers and the disciples were in their upper room and they received tongues. I said, wrong answer. They received the Holy Spirit. The tongues was the evidence. Now, there is later on, Paul writes in Corinthians, and speaks about the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation, the gift of healing, and, and it's listed on, but the dis disciples and the followers in the upper room, they received the Holy Spirit and with power. So let, uh, if you would uh, follow with me, I, I did not, um, I didn't put it on screen because I want you to open it up. It's Acts chapter 2. It, I believe it would be familiar to most of us. Uh, it's something, uh, again, that uh, we, we carry on our name. And I remember a gentleman, I don't remember who it was, but I do remember him preaching. It's on the sign, but if we don't walk in that, let's just take it down. If we don't embrace this, if we don't um, believe in this, let's, let's take it off the sign. We can get some duct tape or something or some paint, and we'll, we'll paint over it if we don't believe, you know, in the Pentecostal experience. But Acts chapter uh, 2, Marita, uh, one, uh, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come. See, God does everything in order. You know, I just talked about, I won't plan on saying this, but all these feasts, they all happen on the exact day. When Passover came and it, it was time to celebrate, that's when Jesus died. When he was in the tomb, that was the, the celebration of unleavened bread. And he was in the ground. And this, as I read this, this is when the Holy Spirit came. On the exact day when uh, Pentecost had fully come. And this, all of these feasts are pointing to something else. It's foreshadowing something else. And today, the Feast of Harvest points to the uh, to Pentecost, it points to the uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and this is what I was talking about earlier. They were all with one accord in one place. God help us! And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared uh, to them divided tongues, as of fire. And one sat uh, upon each of them. Each of them. Not just one, but it had distributed itself and, and each had one on its head, and, uh, on their heads. And in verse 4 it says, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, most of us have read that before. But what, what just took place? What just took place? What just took place was God's plan. What just took place was from the beginning. This didn't catch anybody's surprise now. There was some stuff going on and folks didn't understand it and I probably won't get there today. But Peter had to come down. See, they, they made a sound too. When they, when they spake in other tongues, the, they were in, in a house, in an upper room, but the people in the street said they heard their own languages. But this is what took place. Uh, Acts chapter 1, if we can, uh, that's real small. So if you want to flip over to Acts chapter 1. Verses 4 and 5. And Pastor Don has just covered this recently. It says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. I lost my place. He commanded them not to depart from Israel, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. 
For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So what just took place was the coming of the promise of the Father. And I want everything that God has promised me. I, I want to cash in on it. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to uh, discount it. I don't want to be without it. Because if, if Brother Tom has, has got a gift for me, and let, let me tell you, somebody just gave me a gift uh, yesterday. It's pretty cool. It was hand carved two doves. Um, so uh, when I thought about it, I thought about peace. So I'll speak that over all of you right now. T two different doves. So shalom, shalom. So we'll get back to what I was going to say. If Brother Tom is going to give me a gift, I want it. Right? I mean, if, if Miss Orr calls me or um, whoever calls me, uh, Scott, you call me and say, hey man, I got something for you. I, I want it. I mean, I'm going to have in my mind that we're going to have to catch up with one another. And so what I'm just saying all this to say this is the promise of the Father. That's what happened. Let's not get hung up. Let's not get hung up on the tongues or... This is a gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us for a purpose. And if we did not need it, God wouldn't be trying to give it to us. So the, the promise of the Father, that's what it was. Why did it happen? Why was it needed? Now, I don't have time to rehearse all of John and, and Christ trying to um, explain to the disciples. Because, see, we've got an advantage. We, knew, we know what happened, right? They didn't know what was going on. But he was trying to prepare him, guys. I got to leave. I am going to go pre prepare a place for you, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I want to send another helper. And this is why, right here. This is why we need. This is why you need. And I can say not to point at people, but this is why we need the Holy Spirit right here. But you shall receive power. Now this is Christ speaking. Leading up to the, the day in the upper room. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So what that means is, to me, is that um, we cannot be effective witnesses without this now we can witness and we can um, and we can be all that we can be in salvation and sanctification but if this was not important Christ would not have told him to tarry if this was not important to you it wouldn't be in scripture does that make sense this is important. This day is a high note. This day is a, a crescendo note in uh, Christendom, in the, Ju the Judeo-Christian realm. Uh, not everybody celebrates it the same way we do, but I'm telling you, every denomination under, um, uh, under that covering, the ev evangelicals, we, we know that this day is a special day. The day is the birthday of the church. Now, since we are Pentecostal, we, we embrace the fullness thereof. We believe that it's available to us right now, and we believe that it's needed right now. Not just to a, uh, a tongue or a babbling of, but it's because of power. I wasn't planning on saying it, but it, here it is. Um, Paul said in Corinthians, he said that in almost a, a discussion, so, so what shall I do? He says, I will. I will pray in the Spirit. And I will pray with understanding. Meaning, when we pray in the Spirit, we don't know what we're doing. But it says that you're speaking mysteries unto God. Hallelujah. And Jude says that when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you're lifting yourself up in your most holy faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, that's just another reason uh, that we need the, need the Holy Spirit. 
excuse me, let me find my place here. So I believe, just summing everything up, I believe there's four things that is captured in just a, a short amount of time. About a 10 day, a, about a 10 day window, I believe all this takes place. And then it carries on out from this. But th th these are four, four things I believe that takes place. I believe there was a response. I believe there was a response to the Word of God and, and, or the words of Christ. Now, I just, just read out of uh, Acts chapter 4, and, I mean, excuse me, Acts chapter 1, and you may still be there, so I'll, I'll do it in reverse order. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. This is the words of Christ now. He said, um, After being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. So they were, they were doing exactly what Christ had asked them to do. And if you would, flip over to, to John chapter 20, verse, uh, verse 22. John chapter 20. Verse 22, and this is what it says. And again, this is the words of Jesus Christ. He says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So I say that to all of us and to myself. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. That is the promise of the Father. And that is God's will. For us all to receive the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I don't have time to break down our um, theology of um, the indwelling and the infilling. Both of those uh, we, we teach, both of those we believe. The, the uh, indwelling comes at, uh, at salvation. So they responded, each one of them responded to the Word of God. They followed the, the request or maybe the command of the Lord. Next, I believe there was a reception. I just read about there was a, a sound, a sound from heaven. And it wasn't a, a sound that built up. It just came in strong. And their, their ears heard that. And their, uh, what, what heaven was, uh, was trying to do, they, they received it and, and probably felt it. And they said on each one of them, on each one of them, there was a fire as a, uh, uh, as a fire of tongues, cloven tongues, I believe the King James says. And it rested on each one of them. There wasn't anybody left out. And that's why, I mean, wow, 120 people, you, you know it's a move of God. So may we get concent concentrating on Him and what He's trying to do uh, with us. And also there was a response and said, I wrote down here, it says, and they, they were all received. They all received the Holy Spirit. No, no, excuse me, I'm under reception. I'm, I'm uh, reading wrong. And the reception was they all received the Holy Spirit. They heard it. They received it. Every woman. Now what are y'all thinking right now? What's, what's your thoughts? Do I, you know, is it relevant today? Do I, do I even need this? I mean, sure, you, you, Walter, you're talking about something that was a couple thousand years ago. Why is that important to me now? Why, why is it important? It says that the, the next thing is there was a release. As they heard a sound, now they weren't releasing the same sound of wind, but they, they released a sound too. It says they spoke in tongues. Okay? And that was just the evidence. We're not, um, uh, it was just the evidence of, of that. And it says, I want you all to say, they spoke. They spoke. Yeah. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit spoke. 
I believe some of us are maybe back offish when we start talking about this stuff because we think the Holy Spirit's going to reach into your mouth and move your tongue a little bit. They speak. I'm going to say in about five seconds, I'm going to say, um, I'm glad Tiffany's here, okay? I'm glad Tiffany's here. I had to will that to happen. Right now, that was my thought, and it was in my language. But you have to will your mouth to the Holy Spirit. You have to yield your mouth to the Holy Spirit. The tongue is unruly, <laughs> but you have to yield to Him. The Holy Spirit did not speak. They spoke. But they did. They released the sound. Hallelujah. They released the sound. <laughs> and it says that they... Most translations will say they began to speak in tongues. Meaning there was the initial, but also it means there is a, a, more, uh, a, the language means there's a continuance. Meaning they just didn't speak in tongues one time and that, that was it. I mean, certainly the, the power falls in them, but it, it means there would be a continuance. Matter of fact, Paul write, later writes, he says, I'm glad I speak in tongues most... Oh, speak in tongues more than the most of you do. Or all of you do. I believe this is what it says. So it's not just a, a one-time thing. There's a filling and a refilling. And I believe the, the last thing I wanted to, to hit on was reaping. Now this all ties together. The response, the reception, the release, the reaping. There was some manifestations going on other than speaking in tongues. It, there was... There was, a, there was probably many things going on. But there's a guy who steps up to the plate. And I guess I'm assuming they, they come out of the, the upper room into the streets. And he, Paul, oh, excuse me, Peter steps up and he starts to explain what just happened. He says, ladies and gentlemen, these, these people, they're not drunk as you suppose, right? I mean, we, we've heard of people being drunk in the Holy Spirit. They're not drunk as you suppose. Now, let's think, let's back up a little bit. Just a few days ago, or before this, what was Peter doing? What? This man was denying Christ just a few days earlier. Well, what's the change? What's happened? What's the story? It's because the Holy Spirit hit him or hit them and he became a bold witness. He didn't care who, who heard him then. But just a few days before this, he was backing up, you know, probably even cursing Christ. I, I don't know that man. I don't know him. I haven't been around him. And he didn't do it just one time, right? He did it three different times. But now he's standing in front of you all this man, this Jesus Christ whom you crucified. <laughs> Woo! Something had changed in him. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, something will change in us. But now, the, my last point here is about reaping. And I want to go right back to these two loaves of bread. The Feast of Harvest, the Feast of Pentecost, is about harvest. Now, at the max, at this, when we, we take a snapshot as Acts ch chapter 2 begins, there's a, at the max was 500 people following Jesus Christ. Now, some of them backed away when he says, hey, you need to drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. And some of them could not handle that teaching. And they left. These 120, Christ had been pouring himself out and had been teaching and folks had been following. Some probably coming, some probably going. But look what happens, and, and I'm, I don't even have time to, to get there. But what happens here is the harvest, the beginning of harvest is happening. 
right at the first part of it. Just the, the reaping of the souls. And, and look where we're at today. I don't know how many uh, Christians is uh, worldwide. Maybe I should have researched it. But there's millions and millions of people that are following Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, it, at the, we, we, we're starting in the beginning of Acts chapter 2. And Acts is the Acts of the Apostle. It would be a lot different if the Holy Spirit had not have come. It would be a lot different. But at the end of this, uh, towards the end of this, as uh, Peter is pouring out his heart, sharing who Jesus Christ is, and, and sharing them that, hey, this, this is the prophecy that Joel spoke about. Now, I'm not going to uh, take time to read it, but Peter quotes Joel, the same scripture I just read earlier, the same one. And what happens? What happens? How many, how, what happened in, in Acts chapter 2 after Peter finished preaching? Salvation. How many? How many? Three. Three thousand. Three thousand. That's harvest, people. So the coming of the Holy Spirit is all about harvest. And that's what we need to be about. Now, this might get a little tight right here. Okay? I'm, I'm one of us. So you still had to love me, right? <laughs> Are you and I, are we about to harvest? I mean, I'm, I'm serious. This is about as serious as I will ever get. Because I, I like to um, sing Kumbaya and hold hands with everybody. I want things to go smooth. But I'm just as serious as I can be with every one of you right now. And I'm speaking to myself. Is Walter Byron concerned about harvest? Am I concerned about the reaping of souls? Because that's why we need the Holy Spirit. So we are concerned. I mean, God help me. God help you. I mean, I know good and well there's times when you need a witness. And you back down. I know that's right. I know that's right. And we need the Holy Spirit alive and, and uh, burning in us. Because we're too concerned about ourselves and our image and how uh, the people perceive us. Church. And we got one of the builders right here. This right here. That's a wall. That's built really well by some gifted people. But this right here, this beam, that's what it is. It's a beam. You and I are the church. And it happens out there. It does not happen in here. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. You and I, and it needs to be alive and it needs to be well in us. And it should not be something that we're afraid of. Because it empowers us to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. I want to say, while I'm thinking, I want to thank Cam and, and Beth for helping me with this, uh, this uh, PowerPoint. But that's what's on God's heart. God's not really concerned about what color your carpet is. I don't think God's concerned if we sing a chorus or sing a hymn. If we sing it one time or half a time or 20 times. I don't think God's concerned with that. But this is what He's concerned about. This is a distant picture, I know. But that is I think 24 grain combines. And it was built, or they were built, to bring in the harvest. And that's why we're here. To help bring in the harvest. There's people that you know that is, will be part of the bride and they don't even know what the bride is. 
but because of you, <laughs> you're going to help reap the harvest. Now these bad boys, I don't know what, they're, they're probably Case International, I don't know. But I guarantee you, whatever make or model that he is, they're fueled with diesel. And you and I need to be fueled with the Holy Spirit. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You are ineffective. You are not efficacious. And you're not accomplishing. And look, guys, I'm, I'm talking Walter too. Walter Trotman Byron. I'm talking right back at me. We cannot accomplish what the kingdom needs for us to accomplish without the Holy Spirit. That's why we celebrate today. This great day, this high note, the, the birthday of the church. 3,000. 3,000 came. And the word of a denier. But he was changed because of the Holy Spirit, because he responded to what the Lord said. Tarry here. Now, I don't believe we have to tarry. I'm getting long. I don't believe we have to tarry. Now, they did, but we've already reached the tipping point. Receiving the Holy Spirit is just as easy as receiving your salvation. It's by faith. It, nothing has to be built up. We don't have to have music playing. You can do it going down the road and say, Father, this is your promise and I need to receive it. It don't make any difference where you're at. If you're a fully cleansed believer, you, that's good ground to capture what the, the, the Father has promised unto us. Now I'm going to close I've uh, asked Beth uh, to, uh, is Beth up there? Okay, it's, uh, okay, Christopher. I've asked them to play a CD. Now see, for a long period of time, we have been taught, and I'm not, I'm not just talking about eight squared or happy home, whatever you want to call it, the gospel of, of, salvation if if the gospel of salvation was it they would not have to tarry for anything they wouldn't have, need to have been emboldened with the Holy Spirit they already had that but there was something more salvation is just the, the, the entrance into the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God has something for each one of us individually to accomplish. Individually and, and to collectively. As I said earlier, this is a Pentecostal holiness church. And we need to walk in our Pentecostal holiness or our Pentecostal roots. Hallelujah. I'm going to get them to play... Um, this song is called Let the River Flow. And I'm not, I'm not going to ask for a response of, of moving around or anything. But I'm, I'm not going to ask. I do not want you to sing. You can listen to the words. But I want you to pray. One, that the river would flow. <laughs> Two, that the obstacles and the hindrances would be removed. And thirdly, if you have strongholds around some of the things I've talked about, that they would also be removed in, in, of, our, of our minds. Because we can have strongholds in our mind and they have got, got our thoughts so captive. You can go ahead and start playing. So that, I, I want us to close in prayer. So as this plays, that's, that's the things I want you to pray about. That the Holy Spirit, because we, we need, there's no need, again, there's no need for us coming today or any Sunday if the Spirit's not here. 
We, we can uh, take the happy home down, the IPHC stuff, tear, tear the whole thing down, we'll put up another one, and we'll say, Ichabod. The Spirit has departed. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit, guys. That's, right. That's just a social gathering. Hallelujah. The Acts of the Apostles. It's about harvest, and it's about, about being distributors for the kingdom of God in signs and wonders. Yes? Let the poor men say I am rich in Him. Let the lost men say I am found in Him. Oh. And let the river flow. Let the blind men say I can see again. Let the dead men say
as I've already said two or three times, the day we celebrate a, a high note in the church. When the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or the, the Holy Spirit descended on them. Such a beautiful story, but it's still real today. Thank y'all for being here. If you have any questions, just get, get with uh, uh, one of us. and we, uh, we bless you today. Again, there will be no service tonight. There is a wake or a visitation tonight at uh, Miller's for Alfonso Elliott, um, beginning at 5 o'clock. Thank you all for being here. And um, let me uh, bless you with a word of prayer. So, Father, we, uh, we do thank you, Lord. For your plan of salvation. God, I thank you how the Bible speaks about for us to be holy. And for us to be sanctified. And for us to be found pure before you. And God, I thank you for the coming of the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you for the empowerment. We just to walk in your, um, your promise. And to uh, walk in the signs and the wonders. But God, may our focus always be looking to you. And our lives being uh, pointing to you. You say, God, I bless these people. God, I pray, Lord, they have been encouraged today, that they have been uplifted, maybe even challenged, God. But God, I pray, Lord, that you would shine upon them as they depart. Keep them safe. And God, I pray that you would uh, continue to help them to uh, properly clothe themselves in your armor. In Jesus' name, amen.